Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you want to learn how to change your old, dreary, sad tile from this to this, we'll keep on watching. Let's get started. Now this video will be a two-part step-by-step process on the complete refinishing of this entire shower tub area. But the first thing we have to do is actually dismantle all the fixtures, which is just fun and kind of uh, entertaining just because you see how old and crummy all this stuff is and how disgusting it is too. Uh, also note to self is make sure you prep the workspace area in the surrounding locations just because there's going to be a lot of dust and debris over this entire process so you want to make sure you try and keep things as tidy and as clean as possible. Now the only thing that's going to be salvaged with this entire project is going to be the tub which is why I'm applying blue painters tape to the entire edge surface as well as putting down a three quarter inch plywood panel just for you know falling debris and that sort which you'll be seeing soon enough. Now at this point, one of the most important things to do is to know where your water shutoff valve is. In my case, and in most cases, it's going to be in the front of your house, but there are a plethora of different areas where it could potentially be. Just make sure you know where it is and turn it off prior to demoing and removing any plumbing, of course, because we don't want to be taking a shower quite yet, if you get my drift. yeah. Now, of course, comes time for the demo portion of the project, which I always enjoy, especially when it's a shower, just because generally when you're taking off tile, it's pretty easy to do because it's been there for, you know, 50 years. So I'm taking apart this entire shower with a couple hammers and my multi-tool, and that's basically it. I use two hammers while removing the majority of the tile on the sides and then use my multi-tool with a nice wood and metal cutting bit to score all of the edges of the drywall that I'll be removing. That way it doesn't rip off any of the existing drywall that I want to keep. And now, yes, I do understand and know that this video is in fast forward motion, but it really didn't take me very long to remove all this drywall and tile. Generally, it took me about an hour or two to remove all the large pieces, and then the general cleanup after that didn't take me much longer after that. Just make sure you have a lot of large black garbage bags as well as a place to actually dispose of all this debris. And now, of course, comes time for the funnest portion of the project is the plumbing portion. Yes, can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Now, we need to replace all the plumbing behind this wall, mainly because we need to install a new mixing valve because we want a nice stylish faucet set, not this ugly old system. Now, if you're skilled and daring enough to take on the plumbing yourself, you're going to need the following. A flame protection kit, a plumber's sanding cloth, solder and flux kit, half inch copper piping, copper elbows and coupling fittings, bronze elbow for shower head and the tub spout, galvanized half inch pipe for the shower head and tub spout, copper cutting tools, pipe cleaner, plumber's tape, and of course your trusty old torch. Now for all US mixing valves, you're gonna have something that looks like this. Now there's gonna be four sides, two sides are gonna to go to the hot and cold, which are on the sides, and the top one's gonna to be going to your shower and the bottom one to your tub spout. Now this video will be a nice little time lapse on how I actually assembled the entire system together, but it's not gonna show you in detail the soldering process, mainly due to the fact that I really haven't done a lot of soldering in the past, and I will be leaving links in the description box below on very nice, very helpful soldering videos, specifically dedicated to soldering. Now I watch these videos, I learn the system, I learn the process, very straightforward, just a little nerve wracking, but you get the hang of it quite quite quickly. Number one tip, especially with the soldering process, is making sure you remove the plastic mixing valve that's in the mixer prior to heating up the mixer. If you do leave it in there, it potentially might melt and damage the entire mixer for eternity. So just note to self on that and making sure you remove it first prior to heating up the entire system and soldering is very important. Almost as important as, you know, not burning down the house that you're working on. So making sure you have proper protection, like I have that little fire retardant blanket behind there, which basically you just can blow this torch on it all day long and it doesn't burn somehow. But inevitably, it is very nice to have, especially in very tight-knit areas like this. So I really could focus on the soldering process and not worry about burning down the house. 
Now prior to me actually being able to turn the water back on, I first had to install the plastic fitting that goes in the mixer, as well as install the galvanized pipe in the bottom and the top of the brass elbows. I then installed some backing behind the tub spout, the mixer, and the shower head. That just makes sure it's secure and stable. Now one stuff that's obviously not required, but I like to do is I actually like to put some insulation just for sound deadening purposes. These are all interior walls, and so you don't have to put in any type of insulation in there, but it's always appreciated, especially if it's close to a bedroom. Now once we have our insulation in, it is time to install our cement board, and I generally use either Wonderboard or Durarock, both are cement boards that are used in shower applications and generally come in sheets that are three feet by five feet. These boards themselves are so perfect and are made for showers, which is why I didn't even need to cut these boards because generally your tub is gonna be five feet wide. Now, as for the sides themselves, you do have to cut them down and I use a grinder with a diamond blade. Now this diamond blade is perfect for this application because it makes quick work. Just make sure you wear a respiratory mask prior to doing it because you do not, I repeat, do not want to breathe that stuff in, no. Now after you transfer your tub spout and your mixing valve locations from your shower to the Durarock, I generally use a diamond hole saw to cut out for the tub spout and with the mixer valve since it's larger, I use my diamond blade and cut it like you would normally cut a pizza. Then I cut a release edge all the way around and then just slowly break off the pieces one by one. I feel this is just a quick, easy, efficient way to do it, as well as the fact that all you need is a grinder and a diamond blade, which makes life just a little bit easier, which is always appreciated. As a general note, I always suggest you leaving some type of space between the board and the tub. It should not be resting solely on the tub, and the fastener should be what is holding the board up. It's just general practice and always preferable to do so. I also don't suggest using two different types of cement board. I had to because, of course, when I went to Home Depot, they ran out of one, so I had to get two different types. But generally note that it's not going to be a big deal if you have to use two, though. One thing we decided to do at the last moment is actually install some type of a recessed shower box. This way we can put all of our beautiful soaps and such in the box and we don't have to bend down for them like peasants. I don't know what I was going with there, but in any case, it's fairly easy to actually make one yourself, but you will save some time and energy, not so much money, but definitely your time and energy if you build it yourself. So I just put a couple two by four studs in place, then put the Durarock on top, then boarded up all the sides as well as siliconed the back panel to the drywall and uh, presto Jane and Joe, you have a box. Now you just have to make sure it's fully waterproof and water tight so making sure you use plenty of silicone is always key at this point. Now after we have all of our cement board fully installed it's time for some taping and we are going to be utilizing some seam tape that is specifically used on cement board. Do not use your general run-of-the-mill yellow drywall tape because that is not preferred in this type of method. This seam tape is specifically for cement board and it just does the same thing that your average run-of-the-mill drywall seam tape does is make sure that the seams themselves when you apply thin set over them do not crack and then diminish the structurability of the tile you'll be installing later. Hopefully that made sense to everyone, but if it didn't, always feel free to leave a festive comment in the description below. I always like them. Now that we have all of our tape fully installed, it is time to start mudding, and I am actually using speed set instead of general thin set because I'm trying to apply this mud as well as the red guard that we'll be installing later in the same day. This speed set can set in mere hours versus a general thin set, generally require 24 hours to fully cure, at least prior to red guarding, which you'll be seeing shortly. You can apply the speed set in a number of different ways, whether it's a plastic or metal trowel, but personally, I like a metal trowel just because one, they're generally bigger, and two, the speed set thickens up real quickly, and the more control you have on where the mud goes is always preferable in my book. And now comes time for the Red Guard. And now Red Guard is an incredibly waterproof membrane product that you can paint on your walls. And as you can see, it's quite a thick product. Yes, it's kind of a mixture between a big vat of bubblegum and one of those big buckets from slime from you know Nickelodeon back in the days. 
Uh, you can tell that I'm a 90s kid, right? But in any case, you wipe it on. I generally use a brush that I really don't care about and can throw away if need be. But as a quick tip, I generally save the brush. I just stick it in the bucket after I apply one coat because for a full membrane waterproof shower, you need to apply two coats of this product. I suggest applying large dollops on the entire wall and then spread it out accordingly because you really don't need to be stingy with this product. It goes a long way. This bucket could probably last me three or four showers deep, but making sure you have a very thick, even coat throughout the entire surface will ensure the fact that the surface itself is waterproof, which is exactly what we want. I also highly suggest getting a good respirator because this stuff is not the strongest odor, but it definitely gets pretty strong, especially when you start applying multiple coats in a small room. It gets a little stinky. And once that's complete, you can just sit back and relax and just enjoy the fact that you're completely done. I mean, look at that beautiful, sexy piece. Oh, oh wait, are you are you telling me we're not done? Wait, we haven't even done tile yet? Wait, when are we going to get to this? Son of a bee. And there you have it, episode number 56 of BIT done. Well not really done you know it's more like halfway as you can see but i will be posting the culmination video in the next coming week so please check that out i'll be leaving a link in the description box below on where to actually find it if you don't find it there just find it on my channel which will be up in a matter of weeks or week but in any case thank you for your time please like this video please subscribe to this channel and please check out my instagram feed and my newly developed website at buitools.me you can learn how to support the channel from there in any case, thank you for your time, and catch you next time. Okay, real talk, and be honest, who actually noticed the family photos in the hallway? Yes, that's me, my brother, and my sister, and of course, this project is at my parents, because why wouldn't you have just beautiful pictures of your children in the hallway?